Hi, I'm Tom Miggett from Tom Miggett Photography. The last episode that I released in 2014 was how to improve the sharpness in your photograph using Adobe Lightroom 5. If you haven't watched that video, I invite you to click on the link right now. The, at the end of that video, I mentioned that there is another functionality in Lightroom 5 that goes hand in hand with the sharpness, and that is the noise reduction. And this is what we're going to cover today. But before we dive in into the tool and see how we can use it and the, the result we can achieve, I'd like to step back a little bit and just think about what the noise really is in photography. When we talk about noise in photography, we're talking about digital photography. And in film days, we had the equivalent, and that's called the grain. And um, I shouldn't say the film days because people still shoot in film. Uh, so it was the grain. Either way, they both artifacts resulting from shooting in low light situation. Because by definition, when you shoot in low light situation, you don't have much information coming from the light. So for the film, you need to have a film, a roll of film that is going to be more sensitive to the light with an ISO, or ISA as we used to call it, value high, such as ISO 400 at a time or 800 and above. For the digital, it's easier. We just turn the knob and increase the ISO value 400, 800 and so on. So when you do this on the digital side, you basically amplify the information that has already been captured by the sensor. And so beside the light information, you start getting some distortion uh, in the in volume of information you have, and that's the noise. On the film, it's basically the film itself that is so sensitive and it starts showing you some artifacts uh, on top of the information coming from the light. Um, for the uh, digital, interestingly, I mean, we call it a noise. Um, and it's quite interesting because you could actually say that this process, this creation of noise, is very similar to what you can encounter when you play electric guitar, for example. Uh, you plug your guitar, you turn the volume up a little bit, you hear the sound of your guitar, the notes and so on. If you really crank up the volume, sure, the sound of your guitar is going to be louder, but on top of it, you're going to start introducing uh, distortion and you're going to hear some weird noises that have nothing to do with the notes from your um, strings. It comes from the imp the amplifier that you use, the microphone that you use and so on. So it's quite similar to uh, what happens in digital photography. Funny enough I read somewhere that when you really deep dive into the um, electronic aspect of photography it seems that I've, I read somewhere where the level of noise that it's acceptable in photography would be 30 decibel. I have no idea how that actually works. So if anybody knows where that would be coming from, please put a, uh, something in the uh, in the comment. So let's dive into Lightroom. Let's see exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about noise and what we can do about it. So what you see here are two images. They are identical. On the left side you have the original, the raw file that's been modified in Lightroom a bit. And on the right side, you have the final image. Um, so if we zoom in, you're going to see what I'm talking about in terms of noise. The noise is what you see on this uh, on the skin right here. It's the black pixel, the dark pixel, the grain that you see on the on the face. This is the um, what we call the noise. On the right side, it's been treated, and you can see the skin looks more like skin rather than scale, and um, it's smoother. And this is what we're going to try to achieve uh, in Lightroom. So to do that, you need to go in a develop module. So we go in a develop module and uh, select the raw file, that one. <clears throat> so one thing to know and to really keep in mind when you're going to work on the noise in your image, reducing the noise in your image has to be the last step in your post-production workflow. It's very simple to understand. If you deal with the noise, if you reduce the noise in your photograph and then you go to the basic uh, tool and increase or play with the exposure level, the brightness, the contrast, the clarity, what not, what's going to happen is you're most likely going to reveal more noise than um, you had initially and you're going to have to go back to the noise reduction panel to treat this one. So in order to avoid going back and forth, just keep the noise reduction for last. 
So the noise reduction is on the right side. It's in the same panel as the sharpening tool, the one we already talked about. In order to work on uh, the noise on your image, it's similar. To, the approach is same as the sharpening. You cannot work with that level of zoom. And that's the very reason why in the right corner you have this black triangle here. And if you click on it, suddenly it toggles a little window here where you see it's zoomed in. Uh, and you can use a selector here to select where you want to see. However, I never use this. Why? Because I've got a 27-inch iMac. So I don't want to use this tiny window. So what I do is I collapse this and then suddenly you have the exclamation point here. Uh, saying, well, in order to um, work using the sharpening or the noise reduction, you better use 100% view or 200, but at least 100% view. So if you click on this, suddenly, here you go, you got 100% view, one on one ratio. You obtain the same thing, by the way, by just clicking on the left side here. So this is the one one uh, view, and we're going to start. In terms of noise, there are two types of noise. There is the uh, luminance, noise and the color noise. Uh, the luminance noise is what you see here is the black uh, pixels. If I zoom in at 2 to 1 you will see more. It's those little artifacts that you see on the skin and on her skin as well. That, those are the noise uh, luminance, the luminance noise. The color noise is what you see here. There is a green dot right there. It's Usually it's a singular pixel with vivid red, blue, or green color in places where it shouldn't really be. Um, to be honest, the cameras nowadays, uh, for the last f four years or so, are really good with color noise. So you don't really have much color noise in your image. But um, it, sometimes you can have some. It's worth also noting that um, Lightroom by default uh, set the color noise reduction to 25, so we already treated the noise uh, for you to make it acceptable. When you want to deal with the noise reduction, you always start with the color. Why? Because you will see that the treating the color noise is basically desaturating those singular pixels that you have. So once it becomes gray, then you can uh, work on the luminance because it will basically look like a luminance noise. So let's go in the color and let's see what would happen if we were going to luminance zero, to color zero, sorry. This is the color noise. You see a lot more now. You still see a green spot here, but you see a lot of green and red, magenta and blue. And so that's the reason why Lightroom knows that, well, you better use the noise reduction for the color at least at 25 to make something acceptable. So let's treat this little dot right here. So to treat it, simply just go slightly on the right until it disappear. Here it disappeared. There's no point of going even more. Is there any effect of going all the way? Well, yes. I mean, it introduces more noise and it desaturates your image. So you don't really want that. So going back to where I was, here we see it. I'm still looking at that green dot. And here... That's it. It is a beer. Okay. Then we have detail and smoothness. Well, detail is in case you were actually cranking um, up the colors and desaturating, the detail will bring back some uh, some colors back um, in case you went too much. And for the details, I, to be honest, I never really use that one. I don't really see the point uh, in the in the photography that I do. Smoothness, it's a new feature that came out, I believe, in 5.4, so late 2014. And uh, it's because sometimes with color uh, noise, you can end up having, it looks like smears on your images. So let's bring it down to zero, because by default it's at 50. And you'll see what I'm talking about. You see here we have some orange under the eye right here. We've got those stains. It, it really looks like stain red over here. So if we bring it back to... Um, to the default value, you see it's much better. So I believe now we're in a position where we can actually start dealing with the luminance noise. And the luminance noise, it's over here. Um, just like with the sharpness, if you actually press and hold the Alt Option key on the Mac while you move the luminance, you will t 
end up looking at a, a monochrome preview. Personally, I do not use that view. I rather deal with the noise looking at my images the way I uh, edited it, color-wise. So, um, you need to be careful with this slider to not push it too much because look what happened if I go to 100. You see, it smoothened the whole thing. It's it's awful. It reminds me of that um, uh, video that I've seen uh, last year of a French photographer explaining how to deal with, how to retouch skin and how to smoothen it. And what he did was a disaster. It was all... It was all like this. So uh, yeah, you definitely don't want to crank up your, your noise reduction uh, slider. So instead, just go back down and try to find uh, a, a proper um, a proper middle point, a proper threshold here. So what you want is reduce the noise, but you don't want to lose too much detail and flatten your image. So still good. I'm looking at the eyes right now. We're still getting a little bit of noise here, but the skin is a lot better. So I quite, I quite like this. The detail, detail same. You can use the Alt uh, Option key on the Mac and move uh, the slider. And what the detail will do is similar to the sharpening. It will basically retrieve some details. If you lost detail by softening your image using the luminance slider, the detail will bring some details back. But watch out because if you actually bring it all the way, you're gonna start seeing a lot of weird. Uh, details happening and <laughs> it, it, it almost looks like um I don't know like kind of a, a pattern thing that you posted on it it, it really looks bad uh, so be careful with this I'm just going back to 50 which is the uh, the default value and just see how much I want to bring I don't want to bring too much I think I'm pretty good here contrast that is a, an interesting one same you can use the alt option key and in fact I use it there because I see much better uh, the contrast with uh, the monochrome view. And so you just want to bring the um, the contrast back. So contrast as it does is just darken the darks and brighten the brights. And um, that's how you get contrast. So I think here it's pretty uh, good. Okay. I think I think that's not bad. Bear in mind we are uh, a ratio of two to one, so that's two hundred percent, and that was shot at sixty four hundred ISO on the five D Mark III. So if I go at one hundred percent, let's see what we get. It's not rendered here. It's rendered, so it's really not bad at all. Bear in mind that view is if you wanted to print it a hundred percent, which on the five D Mark III, uh, that would give you a print of. A3 format, uh, so that you know most of the time you're not going to print that big. So interesting to uh, to bring back to um, a standard size. I've got a big screen, so what you would see here is pretty much the equivalent of um, an eight by twelve um, print. So it's it's not bad at all. Let's let's compare it to um, the TIFF file that we had. So obviously we're not going to achieve the same result. And let me let me swap them so we're back to what we had uh, initially. So it's rendering it. We're not going to have the same result. Why? Because my TIFF file, uh, in my workflow, I went from Lightroom to Photoshop. In Photoshop, I treated the skin, which uh, smoothened and equalized even. A, your um, the tone of your skin so make it make the skin already better and then I went from Photoshop to Lightroom and so that's why the di this a serious difference in terms of the skin the skin looks much better after uh, being treated in Photoshop but in terms of noise this is fantastic this is really really good let's let's go back to um, this one and how it was when we started press here and it's going to render. This is what we started with, right? And this is what we ended up with. It's going to render. Look, it's a, it's a massive improvement, really, really great improvement. Don't get me wrong, I mean, the feature is fantastic, but it's not going to do miracles, right? And one of the um, 
issue I find is that when you deal with the noise, unlike the sharpening where you had a masking and you could actually choose where uh, how much sharpening you wanted or where in the image you wanted the, sh the sharpening to happen. In a noise you can't, so it applies everything. So while we wanted to smoothen the face and the skin, it was fine, but he's wearing fur. And so therefore it's not as sharp as it was uh, before. Look at the, just focus on the fur here. I'm bringing back and you're gonna see it ap appearing. You see, we had a lot more detail with noise, but we had a lot more detail. So we lost that. Unfortunately, there's no way in Lightroom to avoid that. Uh, and I wish we could somehow combine the noise reduction with the radial filter. Uh, that way we could actually do different, or even with the brush, that'd be fantastic to do that. Um, so, uh, and there, there would be a way you could uh, combine Lightroom and Photoshop to use the layers and the mask to, um, to get different type of, uh, different uh, level of noise reduction in your image. Maybe I'd do a video on uh, one day on this one. But as I said, it doesn't, it doesn't always do miracles. And as an example, I've shown you this one. This is a photograph that I took right after the, the snow and we're heading to the reception and I noticed that the groom and uh, someone from the family uh, pulled the, 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 the wedding dress up so it wouldn't get dirty in the merge as we were walking back to the hotel. And I just wanted to catch the moment and my assistant was right next to me. Uh, the flash, we really thought that this was all over and we were just heading to the reception inside. So the flash went off set up, nothing was set up and I only had a videographer next to me uh, with the light on ch showing us where to go. Uh, so I, I just, crank the ISO up and if you look at the value of the ISO that's 102,400 ISO. This is huge. So obviously I already treated, I think I went, um, yeah I didn't go in Photoshop but I did treat uh, the image as much as I uh, as I could. I didn't treat the noise though um, but I tried and I couldn't get anything uh, great. I, I treat the color, here you can see the color, uh, I think it was in a previous video but uh, you see color here that was at one if we back to the default one we still get the red and so on so in cases like this my advice is try to go monochrome and, and do something creative and this is what I did so I, I turned something that didn't look good in color turn it in black and white which looks like an old picture um, so which looks like it's been uh, printed on glass so I, I, I quite like this uh, this result so um, this is it. This is all there is to know about the uh, noise reduction tool uh, in Lightroom. I hope uh, you found this video informative, that uh, somehow it demystify uh, the whole process of noise reduction. If you have any questions or comments, please down below in the comments. I love reading those. If you like the video, don't forget to give me a thumb. And until next time, this is Tom Miggett saying, if you like it, well, capture it. Ciao.